Hi guys and welcome back to Car Focused. Now it's a beautiful day here in England. The sun is shining, obviously it's like 25 degrees. No, it's not, it's freezing, it's windy. We're still kind of in lockdown and we're struggling for cars to be honest. So I've had to drag out the old daily driver, my Ford Focus estate here. And there's a reason for this, because you probably saw, I did a video about a month or so ago and I was talking about possibly selling this and then getting like a, a 6K sort of hot hatch. Um, but I've actually decided, I think the best thing is to keep this car. And the reason is, I literally think this is all the car that you need for like five to six thousand pounds. It's perfectly reliable, it's still fairly modern. It's a 2014, it's a diesel, so it's cheap to run. And it just doesn't give me any grief. Like I've had it for a year and a half, I've not spent a penny on it. I've just obviously had it serviced and MOT'd. But, um, and I just thought if I bought a cheap hot hatch, I think I could potentially run into problems and it would kind of void the point of having a reliable daily. So I'd be spending money on that and obviously spending money on the RS. So this video is basically about this car and what you can get for 6,000 pounds and the fact that you literally just don't need anything else. So you probably see there are a lot of YouTubers out there talking about their daily drivers and we're looking at sort of brand new RS6s, Golf Rs, you know, GR Yaris's, all that kind of thing to go alongside their supercars. But I'm just a normal bloke. I've got a full-time job. I'm not loaded. And this is kind of the best I can do. So what does £6,000 get you? Well, this is a Ford Focus Estate, 1.6 TDCI, 58,000 miles. Um, it's got full Ford service history. Very well looked after. I mean, it's got Michelin tires all round new brakes there's not really any scuffs on the car any dents or anything like that you can see it's filthy i mean the wheels are covered in brake dust and there's dust and water splashes all up the side of it but that's what a daily is all about you don't buy one of these cars to cherish you know polish the life out of and show it this is a car that does the day-to-day -day duties and this is the reality of it basically Another practicality of this car, I do love a bit of mountain biking. Now this has got roof rails here, which is perfect for me. So I went on the uh, Ford store online and I bought some roof bars and then I bought a, um, a fuel bike carrier and I stick my mountain bike on here. I don't have to load it into the back of the car and off I go. See, one of my favorite things about this car, and this is only something that I've kind of got into in my thirties as you get a bit older, is the fact that it's an estate. I mean, the amount of room in the back of this thing is it's incredible really. I mean, I can actually lay inside it quite comfortably and my legs aren't hanging out the back. So if you find yourself homeless and you need to live in your car, then a Mark III Ford Focus Estate, quite frankly, is perfect. Now, I bought this little plat, this little rubber mat as well. So if you want to sling your dogs in the back, you know, and they're covered in mud and crap, it keeps the carpet nice and pristine. And you can fold the seat, you can fold the seats flat and you just gain all of that extra room in the back. And this, this thing is massive. So if you're doing a tip run or you're taking loads of luggage and stuff, it literally just swallows it up. And it, another thing about the estate, if I put this down, I close this as well quickly. Don't you think that it's better looking than a Focus hatchback? I think the, Focus, the Mark III Focus estate, I think it's a really good looking car, particularly at the back. I love these headlights compared to the hatch. I think these just work much better. And if you can stretch even further and get an ST, you've got an awesome looking all round fast estate. Also, while we're talking about the boot of this car, it's got another couple of little features which are really handy. We've got a 12 volt socket here. So if you want to plug, I don't know, fridge or something in, we've got a nice compartment here, which I've got my little air compressor in. You can stash something away in there nicely. And then, oh, hang on a minute. How'd you get that on there? That's it. And then, this is what I like, if you've got loads of shopping and you've got some stuff that you want to, you know, hide away from the general public, boom, you slide that across, job done. So I did touch upon that this car is very cheap to run. Now, two things which normally cost the most in terms of maintenance, uh, your tires and your brakes, or if the engine blows up the engine, but this hasn't blown up yet anyway. This is, I think this has got about 115 horsepower, like around that area. And that means there's significantly less stress on the tires and the brakes, because I'm going slower, there's less power and torque going through the wheels. So basically I've had these tires on now, these Michelins for well, about a year and a half, and I still don't have to change them. If I was daily in my RS, I probably would have gone through, but at least a set of front tires. So you don't have to be forking out for brakes and tires, like, every 10 minutes, which is gonna save you a lot more money. 
So we've done a quick look of the outside features of the car. I've explained that I think it's a better looking car than the hatchback. Talked about the boot. Now we're on the inside. Now this is a seven year old car. Didn't cost me that much money and it still looks pretty modern inside. I think the Mark III Focus in general, the interior, some people will say it looks quite dated, but I still think it looks fairly modern. This has got the original sync system, so I can sync my phone up with phone and Bluetooth audio as well. We've got USB in the back here, um, steering wheel controls, voice control as well. You know, a lot of good features for a standard ZTEC Focus. We are missing a couple of things, but I can live without them. We don't have auto lights, we don't have auto wipers, and we don't have an armrest in the center. But if you buy like a big bottle of drink, you can just pivot your elbow on the top of the bottle, which is, acts as like a temporary armrest. Got two cup holders here, will fit coffee in beautifully. And then there's another cup holder just at the back here for your rear seat passenger. So yeah, it's actually all right in here. The seats are nice and comfortable. This car, I mean, you're not, you're not driving this thing fast because it doesn't go fast, so, it's just a comfortable car to get you back to and from work, shopping, you know, that kind of thing, road trips with a family. And to be honest, guys, I literally, other than the lack of armrest, I don't have any complaints. Like, I, I can't think of a better car to spend this money on. In this condition, with this history, you, you, you tell me, what else can I buy? Because I bet it's going to be more expensive to maintain. If it's BMW or something like that, you know, it's just going to cost more money to run, to replace parts. Whereas you can't really go wrong with a Ford of this of this age, really. So that's it, guys. A quick whistle-stop tour of my Mark III Focus Estate, 1.6 TDCI, my daily driver. And it just goes to show, really, that if you're on a fairly limited budget, you can buy a car which will do everything you want it to do, and it won't cost you the earth to run. It'll be safe, it'll be safe for your family, and it will just be a reliable car to get you from A to B. So yeah guys, as always, thank you for watching. Until the next time, hopefully we can get some good cars soon. We're just waiting for Corona to kind of die down, if it ever will. But yeah, thanks for watching. Um, please like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.